Of course, there are a new side in the first division this year, a new side in the league in the shape of Treaty United. And we're joined by their first team manager, uh, Tommy Barrett. Now, Tommy, you're very welcome to the programme. Thanks, briefly. Thank you. Thanks. How are you doing? Hey, Tommy. How are you? Tommy, nice. welcome to the league. Not that you've not been here before, but welcome to the league as the manager of Treaty United. Uh, what's your kind of your thoughts and, and hopes for the for the next 12 months as as the coach of the team? Hey, yeah, look, obviously just to compete in every game and, and, and see where it takes us. Um, you know, I know people are sick of hearing the, the old cliche, take it game by game, but I suppose there's not much else we can do, you know, um, uh, from, a, from a starting point. Uh, you know, I've been asked that question around expectations by nearly everybody you now at this stage the last two last four or five weeks. Um <clears throat> and I suppose to explain the cliche probably is the way to go about it, really. Um like I don't I don't believe in setting goals anymore. You know, I used to in the past, but I think you know, I actually came up with a conversation with my wife actually. She she was saying like you're setting limits and she's probably right. And and if you're limiting yourself, like if we're happy with winning four or five games, you know, that sets us on a negative straight away. So, you know, we're not going to set limits and, and we're going to take it game by game, I suppose, is, is the, definitely the way we're going to go look at it, you know. Yeah, Tommy, just um, how quickly did you have to assemble this squad? Were you able to kind of feel out a group of lads before you kind of got the licence or was this all a, a quick push since uh, the licence came down kind of a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, we we'll do... We were hearing we were hearing soundings that we were going to get the license that you know we might get it with a good possibility of getting it but you couldn't contact um junior players team so right you know with the budget we were going to have it was going to be an amateur budget so i was kind of in touch with a few of the the ex galway lads because you know a lot of the other lads were snapped up um so you know like so jack lynch and um mark Ludden and a couple of other lads up in galway joe collins and connor melody and there was a few more actually um, and the current I was chatting to as well a bit but um, you know we I was talking to a few lads out before that as well like obviously like so Will Fitz the Limerick based lads and Killian Bruder and that but they all had got clubs at that stage so you know and it, it was a bit mental thing to be honest it, it wasn't yeah. nice it, it wasn't great because you're like those lads are ringing you know, will there be a team and you know they're saying will we hang on because it's locally based and I'm like no, lads, you have to look after yourself. You have to sign with a club, like, you know, so the lads have to go to Derry and Cove and, and Harps and that. And, you know, obviously I'm, I'm not going to stop them, you know, because I couldn't, you know, because we weren't sure. And then yeah. I think on the 22nd, I couldn't speak to junior players because, you know, you can't speak to, um, again, it would have been hypothetical and it's, I suppose it's not the right thing to do anyway. And then you're only causing friction with junior clubs down here and you don't want to be doing that either. Um, so yeah, it was it was messy and it was like a two day job getting getting the team together and look, it shouldn't happen, uh, you know. Yeah. But uh, you know, I think I spoke about it already. It, look, it has happened now, and we have to move on. Speaking of two day jobs, Tommy, I suppose our paths crossed a couple of years ago. Um, there was obviously discussions about the future <coughs> of Limerick. So you were the manager at the time, and I was part of a, of a group coming in trying to help the club. And um, it didn't work out from our point of view, but we we kind of um. I thought we got on pretty well for the couple of days we were there together. We had some really, really good in-depth conversations about the future of the club. Can you tell us a bit more about, I suppose, the whole origin of Treaty? Because what you've done is effectively what we would have chatted about and would have been, I suppose, the plan that you've had for a long time about the future of senior football in the whole Midwest region and in Limerick City in particular. Yeah, look, and I think that's that's the thing. It's it's not to get it's to get us, and we keep using that word sustainable and stability. You know those words, and and I think that has to happen with this um, this club because you know Limerick football, Limerick senior football has been, you know, let's be honest about it, it hasn't been great for you know as far as I can remember. Like I'm forty two, gone forty two this year, and like as long as I can remember, we were twenty years in the first division. Um, you know when we got up, big budgets got us up. Um, in both 2012 and 16, um, and that's no disrespect to the managers or, or, or anything like that, or, or, or the people involved in the club. But you know, they were big budgets, um, and you know, that's that's what got us up essentially. And then you couldn't afford to stay in the, in the Premier League, and and we went back down fairly quick again. You know, so um, I think we have to, you know, look. 
people won't like me saying this, but like the, the players and the uh, the players are in Dublin and, and the surrounding areas, and we can see that you know because of the population base and because they have put you know built good clubs early on, like the likes of St Kevin's and Joseph's Boys and all those teams. And outside of that, it's Cork and Galway and Waterford have improved immensely in the last few years as well, and we've seen that. And you see that at the top of the tree as well in international football, senior internationals. We haven't had a senior international from Limerick um, in the last 40 years. You know, Johnny Walsh is the last one 40 years ago. And, you know, and for a, a, a sporting city and, and, and a, a city perceived as a soccer city, as a football city um, and a football county, we haven't that, got that. So that, that shows to me that there's problems and there's issues. And, you know, um, we, we participate quite well in, in, in a lot in, in, in football, but, you know, we haven't got that elite to the elite level. And I don't use that word lightly because, you know, it's been bandied about a bit, all right, that elite level, but certainly professional players, we haven't produced them. You know, even around the league the last few years, we're, we're, we're getting a few now, since, in fairness, since the League of Ireland Andridge came in, we have lads playing, as we said, in Harps, um, Pats, you know, Derry uh, and the likes of that. Um, and a few lads in Galway now. And before that, there wasn't too many players from this region playing in the league. You know, you could name them on one hand in the last 15, 20 years. You know, Bobby Ryan is a, is a prime example. Uh, Barry Ryan, obviously, is from Ennis, um, would have played. You know, obviously, we cover Clare as well. But there is there is definitely, we need to look at the bigger picture down here. And, you know, there is problems there because we're not producing players. And, and you know, I got hammered for that when I said it a couple of years ago because we're so successful in junior and that. But at the end of the day, that's junior soccer. And that points to a bigger problem throughout the country, I think. You know, we're very parochial in our thinking, I think, still in this country. And, um, like, even the likes with the Shamrock Rovers B one, and I know people would disagree with me with, with, when I say that, I think they should have been left in because they were a bit of fresh air last year and, and it's 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 a next level because we don't have an underage system in this country um for the lads the, the 19s to progress on to 21s. Why not? They're playing against men and they're producing players. I know people might say it's unfair because it's rovers, but that's the that's the standard we have to get to. You know, if 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 we haven't got a a pyramid system, these players have to play somewhere, you know, as far as I I I I, I, I as far as I think anyway, I think that we need to get more professionalised and we need to create that industry. Uh, and if we keep doing the same thing over and over, it's just madness. You know, that's my right. Yeah, on that one. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Tommy, you just touched on the obviously ups and downs of, of football in Limerick. And I'm just looking at the women's team that was set up last year and even some of the social media stuff, the kit there with Umbro. I actually think it's very impressive what, what 3D have done, the membership, the um that the club have brought forward. Do you actually think the platform is there for, you know, the, the improvements to, co to come about that you're talking about? Yeah, I think, I think it is. Dean. I think, you know, we need to get the, like, there's no real, um, I think we need to get the off, the off the field stuff right first. You know, like you mentioned there, the membership, we need to get our own ground, you know, the markets field isn't our own, but we certainly need, you know, to, Get a better partnership and a better deal there where you know um where anchor tenants and and that it, it's good for us as well and it's good for the whole city and the whole region um and we have to get a build up partnerships maybe with colleges and universities or, or develop our own training facility like we don't have a football specific training facility in this region um and i think that's a, that's a that's a big issue as well you know um so, like, you're paying the cost of that alone and cost of running the club are, are very, very high. And you know yourself, if if the money is going into those things, it's not going into, you know, where it should be going, where it's going to pay for top class coaches and uh, top class academy and 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 essentially top class players. You know, so that's that's where we need to get it right first, and and that might take a number of years, then you know. But yeah. I think this group, um. Are going to do that like look i'm not going to be <clears throat> well i must say i'm not going to be i'm not going to put limits as we said earlier but it's unlikely that you know um i, to, to, I suppose i'll put it this way i'd rather see the club sustainable in the next four to five six seven years than then going up and, and going straight back down again you know yeah. you talked about some of the facilities that you're missing in the region i mean but there are other opportunities within the the i suppose that the limerick 
region, you've got LIT, you've got UL in terms of actual training facilities. You have, for some reason, and one of the legacies, to be fair to the people involved with Limerick FC, one of the legacies that took me by surprise uh, during that period two years ago was the number of highly qualified youth coaches in the region. Uh, it seemed to be kind of a trade-off where people got licenses or help with licenses to be part of the coaching staff down there. And there was, I think, maybe two dozen B or A licensed coaches. There really is the nucleus of, of what you're talking about there just for it to be pulled together. In terms of the group that are doing that pulling together, I know you've got people of the caliber of Con Murphy is the chairman and former public official there with the county council. Dave Mahidi's well known to anyone in League of Ireland circles or UL circles over the last 20, 30, 40 years. Um, <clears throat> is that group strong enough to pull that together in your opinion? Yeah, I think it is. Look, we're training at LIT at the moment, and obviously with Dave Mahidi on board, there's strong links with um, the university, uh, University of Limerick, and, and the, the ladies are training there. So, uh, and that's something we, we are definitely looking at. You know, I, I've um, kind of made the, the initial engagement with um, LIT ourselves, you know, uh, and, and discussions, initial discussions, should I say, and they're, you know, they're expanding as well, and they're expanding out to Kuna, and I'm sure they're looking to, you know, well, hopefully they'll be looking to 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 partner with us in some way in the future as well, and 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 possibly you will with along with them. So it's definitely something we're looking into, um, and the board are looking into uh, as um, for the future. And I think that they are they are, the likes of that is the way to go. You know, it's the only way to go. Actually, <laughs> just bringing it forward, Tommy, to the your own team and the group of lads you have coming into the first game here. Did you feel it was really important to add, uh, I know you mentioned some of those Galway lads, some League of Ireland experience to that squad so that when you come into this league that you're competitive in every game and you can you can kind of find a way uh, to win games and get points on the board? Yeah, I think, I think that's, you know, it's very important. There's no point in us going in um, with a team of kids or, or junior players. We, we know a disrespect to the junior players and that, but you know yourself, it's, there's a big step up you know, from junior football and, and underage football to League of Ireland First Division, you played it long enough. It's a tough, it's a tough division, it's a tough league, and I think this year is going to be tougher than any year. You know, yeah. with the likes of the the Cork, Galway, uh, Shelburne. I think I can't remember anyone any time three teams in particular have been full time in not my lifetime. I can't remember it anyway. I don't think it's ever happened. You know, so as a Cork, Galway, and Shells are definitely full time, and then you have. Yeah. Like Bray last year would have kicked a ball away from from um winning the league. So then and then on top of that you have um you know UCD are always strong. Alone have strengthened um Harry Kenny's gone in to give uh, Brian O'Sullivan a hand down in, in Wexford uh, uh, as far as I know and like they're they're gonna be strong with, with the players that pulled out of Pats and the likes of Alex O'Hanlon and Michelle Burn and that. So yeah, it was very important for us to get those three or four lads and but even the even the the lads we signed back from the junior clubs, I had to go with lads I knew. So a lot of them yeah. would have played with me before, even though they're young lads, you know, like Clyde O'Connell and Jack Lynch, well Jack was with Galway, but uh, Sean McSweeney, you know, is a good player and yeah. Um he you know, the, those boys are, are well capable of, of competing in the first division. It's just we're probably a bit behind now. You know, Charlie Fleming was a good signing out of Cork, he played in the Premier League last year. So yeah. we we um we're a bit behind, obviously, from a from a fitness and and, and even organisation point of view at the moment. But you know, like you said, I think I hope anyway we're we're as competitive as we we, we can be. Um, and going into the first game, but it'll be tough for us this year. But I think we have lads that are you know they're, they're all signed amateur and there's no, there's no one playing. And you know yourself, Dean, the lads are, they're playing because they love it. They're not playing for the money yeah. anyway. That's for sure. You know, it's fast yeah. the money. So. Sometimes yeah. you're better off with, with lads like that, good people, you know, before good players sometimes, you know, they're good players as it is, but, you know, you can get these these lads with massive reputations around the league and you put a bunch of them together and they don't work. So that's what I'm hoping will happen and, and we can get as many results as we can, you know. Yeah. In terms of metrics this year, Tommy, <clears throat> is it fair to say that the most important one to you is just survive the season, break even, make the club uh, a force in the league in five to ten years' time, rather than being competitive um, in every single game from day one. Yeah, but look, you you step out on the pitch, you want to be competitive. You know what I mean? Every game, you want to be competitive, no matter what. You know, you, you like you, 
you can't you can't take that out of players and, and I wouldn't I would look at, I wouldn't want it myself you know I, I, I consider myself very competitive if you want to win every game and you want to do your best in every game no matter what but yeah it's not the, it's not the be all, be all and end all if we if we lose games or you know we're we're anchored near the bottom even though you know I don't want to go into that negative mind frame or mindset because that can seep in as well and you're just feeling sorry for yourself so we certainly won't go in like that um, we know we're up against it but you know that we're hoping that can galvanise us a bit as well and, and, and see where it takes us, you know. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you. Um, as I think the work that's been done behind the scenes and off the pitch uh, down in Limerick over the last 18 months or 24 months has been huge. Uh, congratulations to you, the committee and everyone involved down there. Uh, thanks for giving us your time this evening and the best of luck on Sunday against Bray and for the rest of the season. Thanks, thanks guys. Sunday. Best of luck. Cheers. Cheers, Dean. Bye-bye.